Okay, this will be a video on how to connect audio to the chav. Uh, I'm going to be using a continuity tester, so for those of you that are not familiar with a continuity tester, this is how it works. When the two leads are connected, we hear a beep because there's a short that is useful for working with electronics because we can see when things are connected, like the tweezers are connected to themselves. Or if I have a cable, I can see that my two leads are connected, my two sleeves or the ground is connected, but they are not connected to each other, which is good. Uh, that means my cable works. So the absolute simplest way to connect audio is to make yourself one of these things. I have one cable connected to the sleeve of this jack and another cable is connected to the tip. So if we plug a cable in there, I can see uh, my lead is connected to this guy and my ground is connected to that guy. Um, then I can take this and uh, on this one, this is my sort of test board. I've installed pin headers on the expansion bay here. Um, these are all ground, and uh, these are all the individual oscillators, one through six on this side, so ground and the oscillators. Um, we can test that for continuity now that we know how to also. Um, all of these are grounded together. Beep, 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 beep. Um, and they shouldn't be connected to any of these. No, they are not. But these are connected to all the individual outputs. Um, six, 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 six. Good. Um, also, you can see other parts of the circuit that are grounded. So um, all of the off pins are grounded because those are grounding our timing capacitors. Uh, there are some other parts on the tester board that are grounded. This is grounded. Uh, um, that's where the ground is for the output for the VGA. Um, there are, I think this is ground also for the switches. Um, so that's nice to know. Also, you can see if you're troubleshooting, this is where ground should be for the chip. Hello? Yep, yeah, good. Um, and while we're at it, um, you can see how sync is set up to the center pin here on the sync uh, header is connected to on or the middle pin, I'm sorry, should be connected to on for all of the um, sync bus pins on the other side. So anything that's connected to this is connected to the center pin. Okay, so anyway, once you have one of these guys, you can connect ground or the sleeve to one of your grounds. And then whatever this is connected to will be connected to an audio source. So I could connect it here, and then I'll be able to hear whatever's coming out of oscillator one, or I can hear what's coming out of oscillator two, three, four, or five, or six, or I could do it over here if I want to keep it out of the way. So now we're listening to oscillator one, two, three, four, or five, or six. Although the way we set it up, uh, four, five, and six will probably be out of audio range. They're very high frequency. Another thing you could do is connect your lead to red, green, or blue, and then you can feed some audio into here. Um, it would have to be very loud, but then we can, we can uh, make colors by feeding it into red, green, or blue. Um, so that's a simple thing you can do. Also, you could take an oscillator out, oscillator one, connect it to red, and now we would be hearing oscillator one and also seeing what it does um, with the video. So um, if you're not feeling very brave, but you want to deal with audio, make yourself a few of these and then you can patch them around to different places. Um, if you are feeling brave, you can do it the tricky way. Um, not for the faint of heart, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, you have these little jacks. Um, I got a bunch of these at All Electronics in LA, actually, and they were, I think, 70 cents a piece. Um, so use that resource. You guys have it. Um, 
we can connect, uh, we can see where the ground is by looking at the sleeve or connecting one of our uh, probes to the sleeve and then we can see this is the ground. Um, over here is not, over there is not, that's good. One of these is a switch and one of them is the lead. So we're going to find out which is what by plugging a cable in. Okay, here's the other end of my cable. Uh, so the ground, this guy over here, should be connected to the ground. Whoop. Good. And we want to see where the tip is, which one of those is the tip. Oh, it's that one. Good. Um, and it should not be this one. That's the switch. And because we have limited real estate underneath the board, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. So I got my little flush cutters. I'm going to snip the ground. I'm going to snip the switch right off. So I just have the ground and I have the lead. So the next thing I want to do is solder a ground wire on there. My iron is heating up. Oh, I got some other wires prepped here. Clean the tip. Good. And actually I'll show you, um, this is called the helping hands. Uh, it can hold things for you while you're soldering. It's nice. Thank you, helping hands. Oh, all right, there it goes. Nice and hot. Okay, good. I've got a ground wire soldered on there. And then I'm going to fold this down, um, pressing it on the table there, because I want that out of the way. Um, and there's my little, my first jack. Uh, now, this is a tricky part. Um, you got to work quickly and carefully. I'm using this uh, gel control super glue. I'm going to put a little dab on this side. Try not to glue my fingers together. And I'm going to place it right next to this pin uh, on the power jack. Um, remembering that as soon as I put it down it's going to be there permanently. I'm pushing it right up against this metal part and right up against here and then I'm going to push it down. Nice. Good. Whoop. Oh, it's a little crooked but that's okay. So it's protruding out like that. And then I got my ground wire coming off. All the grounds are going to need to be, or all the jacks are going to be needed to ground, ground are going to have to be grounded together, um, and grounded to the board. Um, and this is the way that I do it. Um, these two are right up next to each other and actually glued together for stability. Um, they are grounded together. Um, then these two are grounded together here. Whoop. Um, nice and neat. And then I have a wire coming off and they are grounded to the board. So all the jacks are grounded together. We can see that by testing for continuity. All right, so I got one probe on the ground. All these sleeves should be grounded together. Beep, 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 good. And then I have the leads right here and none of those should be uh, grounded. There are no shorts, good. Once you have your jacks in place, uh, you want to connect those to the board, and I will show you the easiest way that I've figured out how to do that. Um, let me put a wire on here. We'll do a blue wire. There's my nice little short lead. Okay, I'm gonna tin that, and then I will in my blue. It's easiest to start with the blue, I've found. Mm, whoops. Here, we want to go like that. Almost did the wrong one. There we go. I'm going to put
put on my blue wire. Whoop, got a little bridge. All right, that's in there nice and solid. Looks good. Um, then I'm going to connect a wire to my jack. And I want to be careful not to bridge this to anything. Good. I'm going to just snip this little piece off there. Nice, nice. Okay, then I go over to my board. I'm going to put this up on its side. I'm doing blue first because it's the furthest away. Uh, it makes things a little bit easier. I'm going to plug this wire into here. Let's twist that a little. Okay. I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of wire um, protruding. Um, and it's all right if it's already down on yours because it will, it's going to melt um, the insulation anyway when you try to do this next step. All right. Got that on there, good. All right, so the blue jack is connected to the blue uh, input on my board. And then I also wanna connect my blue pin from the VGA tester to the board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect it right there to um, that little piece of wire that I left protruding here. Um, you can have to see here. See there's a tiny little bit of wire um, sticking out and I'm just going to solder these two together. Um, so I'll do that quick. I'm going to turn my wire. Whoop. Soldering irons off. Actually while that's heating up I'm going to take a little bit off of here, give it a little less wire. There, that's good. Just a tiny bit, like three millimeters it looks like. It's important to keep it neat and tidy under here because there's going to be a lot of stuff crammed into a small space. Looks like the iron is almost heated up. Come on, buddy. All right, there it goes. Turn the wire. Um, then I'm gonna put those next to each other, solder that guy right in there. Yep. Okay, good. Whoop. Nope. good. Maybe I'll just add a little bit of solder in there. Tricky, told you. Nice, I think that's good. Okay, good. Now, um, let's do some testing. So, if I go over to blue, um, that should be connected to my lead. Good. Um, and that should be connected to this pin, too. Good. Great. It's all working. It's hooked up. So, what that means is, whatever is connected to blue uh, will also be connected to this jack and the pin. So, if I send audio in here, I will be able to see it, and if I send an oscillator to here, and this is going out to a mixing board or an amplifier, I'll be able to hear whatever oscillator is connected to blue. Uh, so let's look at that over here. I've got a chav set up um, with a monitor, and it's connected to a mixing board. Um, this one has, come on, 
Um, this one has um, all three jacks hooked up. Um, these are going to a mixing board's um, aux outputs right now. And I have each aux doing a different uh, frequency band. So red is connected to the high frequencies, uh, green is connected to the middle frequencies, and blue is connected to the bass. Um, let me fire this thing up. Uh, I'm just using the power jack here, um, not battery. Good. Um, let me put that on black. Good. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to play some music and we'll see what happens. The highs. We got a little bit of mid-range. When the bass kicks in, you'll be able to see more blue. That's fun, but we're not going to be able to get um, sync from that because our audio source isn't synced, obviously. So something we can do if we're playing music is we can hook up one of our yeah. oscillators also. Let's go. And that we'll get in there. We'll get a little sync action going on too. Let me stop that. So another interesting thing you can do is we can hear the outputs that are connected to pins. So I'm going to disconnect these from the audio outputs from the mixing board and I'm going to connect them to audio inputs. So they're all going to individual mixer channels right now. Let me turn those up a little bit. And now let's see if I patch out oscillator one. Can you see that? To red. Um, we can hear it and see it. Then we'll send um, oscillator 2 out to green. Got a little chord. Playing a chord. And then we'll take blue, send it out, or th oscillator 3, send it out to blue. That's really low frequency. All right. Um, so now we can hear things and see them at the same time. Fun. Okay, thanks.